Hey there, horror movie tea sippers. The following podcast episode will contain spoilers for the movie we are about to review. If you have not seen the movie and do not wish to have anything ruined prematurely, please do not continue to watch or listen until you have seen the movie. And welcome to the Horror Movie Tea Podcast. Today we are covering Monster House. But before we go into the review, let's grab our cups and talk about tea. I realize we kept our tea out. Yeah, I just realized that too. Oh well. <laughs> We're doing a repeat as is obvious to those video watchers. I am drinking the Republic of Tea Brain Boost, which has green tea, ginkgo, green tea matcha, and ginkgo powder. You know what's funny? Huh. I actually almost chose that one before this. <laughs> it's a good one. Like, honestly, between the two, they're very similar, but I would like it. Like, I think, uh, like, this one actually uses matcha powder. Mm -hmm. um, I would still recommend using actual matcha powder, but uh, it's a good, like, if I need to be quick, I don't want to do the whisk and all of that. So. Gotcha. Yeah, and I'm drinking a Republic of Tea's Honey Ginseng Green Tea. It's a good one, too. And it's got green tea, natural flavors, linden blossoms, a word that I am not going to try to pronounce, <laughs> and panics ginseng. <laughs> <sighs> But thank you to the Republic of Tea for allowing us to continue to do what we love. And for our lovely tea sippers out there, brew yourself a cup of tea, sit back, relax, and we hope you enjoy the review. So, the summary of Monster House. Every kid in the neighborhood is scared of old man Nebercracker, but once he goes to the hospital, they find out there's more to his house than it appears. So... Uh, so for entertainment on this one, I give it, uh, this is as high as I can give it, a 6.75. Really, like, I like the animate, well, no, 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 let me back up. Uh-huh. <laughs> I like the storyline. There you go. <laughs> to this movie. The animation can go die in a dumpster fire <laughs> because it it's taken me a really long time to watch this movie. And I actually, this is the first time I have watched the movie all the way through. I did try and watch the movie one other time, but the animation is so uncanny valley to me where it's like, they're trying to make it realistic, but still very cartoony, but it's just like realistic enough. That's like really like, eerie and uncomfortable um and so it's really because of the animation itself that i really struggled getting through this movie because it was like i just it just creeped me out mm -hmm. um so i would not recommend for the this kid for kids if like <laughs> if an adult can't watch it <laughs> but anyways uh but yeah the the animation is like a bit unnerving to me um, but I will say the horror imagery is really good. Like, uh, like the shadow of the house creeping through the main character's like bedroom. I thought that was a really cool effect. Um, the how creepy they make the old man come off at first. It, it's like one of those things. So where I'm like, is it the animation that makes it look creepy, or is it them like actually trying to make it look creepy? They did do a good job of making the house look creepy and haunted. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, so obviously like there, there's parts of the movie where I'm like, okay, obviously they wanted that to be more like horror theme than, um, than just like the an animation itself. And maybe they did the animation on purpose. I don't know. I will. Another thing though, that didn't hit that well for me, aside from the animation is the comedy didn't really hit for me. There's only like one joke out of the whole movie that really made me chuckle. But besides that, all of what they would be like, ah, oh, it's supposed to be funny. I was just like, okay, like it didn't really hit for me at all. Yeah. Um, I will say I did like the house's personality yes. and the mischievous like uh, personality it has. And, like it's just chaotic energy and i was living for it um and i did think it was 
interesting the twist in the movie where it's like first you're like oh this old man like really hates kids and he's just like you know um trying to protect his lawn but then you find out no his house is being uh, haunted by his dead wife and he's actually protecting people or kids against like the house uh, as I that that was an interesting twist. I like that a lot. Mm-hmm. I think that um, expanded and made the movie feel a little bit more like it, it wasn't just like it, it made it more interesting mm-hmm. for sure. There was more depth to it. Yes. And then um, the his backstory, I did find that kind of interesting mm-hmm. and unique. And then I did like the the house design at the end where like the trees were arms. That was that was kind of cool and interesting how it like transformed like that. And then also, I, I also find found it relieving that the kids actually had distinct personalities. Um, so not only did they physically look very different from each other, but like just like hearing them talk, you could immediately know whose is who because their personality was that distinct from each other. Mm-hmm. And so it's cool to not only be able to easily tell them apart, but also like see how they work together despite being like so different. But yeah, it's like for me, I don't need to watch this movie again uh, just because the the animation makes it too difficult and then with the that on top of the jokes that just didn't hit for me um it's like the storyline doesn't quite carry it through that is like i might watch the movie like once in a great while because the storyline is interesting but besides that um this movie doesn't really have a whole lot going for it there's a lot more st- uh, there's stronger movies out there like paranorman which we just reviewed last week or um, uh, Frank and Weenie, like those types of, or cri- the Nightmare Before Christmas. Coraline. It's, Coraline is like, there's so many other like horror kid movies out there that have better animation, better story, all of that. It's like this one kind of like fades in the background. And that's why it took me so long to watch this movie. But it's like, I just kept on seeing it pop up. And I was like, well, I'll give it a try. But yeah, it's, it's not, it's not a, it's a good movie, but it's not a great one for me. So, I agree. I give it a six. Okay, even lower than me. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's just an okay movie. Mm-hmm. The animation really does bother me. <laughs> Did it make it hard for you to get through it too? A little. The animation? Yeah, like, I mean, I had seen it before a few times, but it's just. I don't know why it's just like nightmare fuel. A for little me. bit, yeah. yeah. It's just subpar compared to like Paranorman or Coraline or Nightmare Before Christmas or Which I think Paranorman and Coraline came at least within a couple of years mm-hmm. of Monster House. I think so, yeah. And that's why I don't understand. It's like this the animation feels almost more like nineties yeah. where it's like still like on the freaky level. Yeah. But, but it's a more recent movie. Yeah. So, uh, the storyline is decent, but the I feel like the execution was off a little bit. Like, the comedy could have been better. The, the storyline itself could have been a little stronger. There were just certain things about the characters that didn't make that much sense, or different choices... Um, plot line wise that didn't make that much sense and there were certain things of convenience or movies got a movie so we'll get to a lot of those in the the realism I'm sure but (laughs) it's just all in all a a background movie to me yeah and I don't know if you picked up on this but it's like the movie starts almost like so dark but then, like, the ending is almost, like, not light enough to push it through. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It Maybe it's just, like, the overall tone of the movie. But it's, like, something... I don't know. It just doesn't... There's not as much resolution as you feel like there should be. Yeah. 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 I agree. But it's it's one that... 
I feel like it's for a certain kind of person. Yeah. And we're just not those people. It's all right. And I'll have it on in the background occasionally while I'm doing something else. But it's not really going to be one that I'm going to pay that much attention to. Yeah. So. Yeah. They also can't do teenagers in this animation style very well. Yeah, the babysitter and then the her boyfriend or whatever. Yeah, the boyfriend looked like he was in his 50s. Seriously. Yeah, like... He looked yeah. like a middle-aged dude. <laughs> kind of sounded like it too, not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah. A high middle-aged dude, but a middle-aged dude nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. That This maybe has some problems. A little bit. Yeah. But um, for realism, I would rate this. This one's another like all of these like kids movies are so hard to rate. But uh, I guess a lot of horror movies because that seems to be a repeating theme. A little bit. Yeah. But I would I would I think 1.5 is the highest I can give it. Um, I, I think <clears throat> the kids being terrified of. A neighbor is completely like with, within the realm of realism because it's like there's always that like I, I remember as a kid there's always that one house where it's like there's this neighbor that's kind of to themselves and sometimes just if, a little off yeah they're a little off and because of that like you know kids they they have you know huge imaginations and so they'll start coming up with stories and all of these things that kind of like spreads and so it's like you kind of have that one house that's like, oh, you don't want to go in front of them. Or, I mean, there are the neighbors that even though they're maybe more pleasant to the adults, to the kids are like, stay off my grass. And they get really mad if you like play in their yard. I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of one of those people. <laughs> or God forbid one of your toys accidentally lands on their lawn. Yeah. Yeah. And they like freak out. It's like, okay, Karen. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah. Um, you just get my ball and I'll be on my way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, it was uh, kids playing like soccer in our yard because it's like they they had their own yard and then they also had a backyard and a park within like less than five minutes walking distance, which mm -hmm. I mean, I can understand if the parents want like the kids to be close, but it's just like. I, I can, you're literally like interrupting, like, cause our, our walls are thin here. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you can hear everything outside and then hearing like talking like right at her window. It's like, please, you, you have other options. Please choose other places. But anyways, yeah. the, I, they're, they've got, they've gotten old enough that they don't do that anymore. So I'm like, yes, they get to be inside hermits like the rest of us. <laughs> Uh, but the the babysitter taking advantage of the main character and like that situation where it's like you know she's in a higher position than him and so she's like you know i'm going to go do my own thing and if you don't listen to me then i'm going to tell your parents that you know you broke this blah blah, blah. you know it's like since she's in the higher authority or higher position in that situation like she's assuming that the parents will believe her um can totally see that because people take advantage of power a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I one thing that I, I will say the some of the characters that hit the least well for me were the two cops. Yes, um, like <sighs> they did a lot of the jokes, and that just didn't hit. Like one cop was like super like trigger happy, and they also he was a newbie. He was a newbie, yes. He was overeager. But it's like, it's like these preteen, early teen, or like, they're at least young enough to need a babysitter. Uh, it's like, they were like threatening these kids. And so, um, and just in general, like with the house and like how they uh, approached like the situation as a whole, they made the cops too dumb. But not to the point where it was enjoyable as a part of the comedy. It was just like why did you have these two characters? Like, the movie would probably be better without those two characters because they didn't really seem to add anything to yeah. the movie, to be honest. They didn't. And then, like, the, the kids' interactions with each other, like, them, like, kind of picking on each other and um, 
you know, having their like conflicting personalities. And so I thought the, the interactions felt genuine and real. You know, I feel like the parents, though, were uh, the main character's parents were like too oblivious. Oh, yeah. To stuff. Oh, yeah. Especially with his mom noticing like every little thing. Yeah. 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 This one is hard to rate. <laughs> Because nothing is really very accurate in this movie. <laughs> I'm going to give it a 1.5. And that's as high as I'm going to go. <laughs> well, it's like as far as it's like just, the kid interactions and like, like... Yeah, the kid interactions and like watching the house and and taking notes like he feels like he's on to something that, that I can get. Um... God, Star 69 is such an archaic concept now. <laughs> Most people don't even have landlines anymore. Yeah. Which I feel like at the time the movie came out, landlines weren't that much of a thing either. They weren't much of a thing. But there's still like a, a few but yeah, groups yeah. of people. Mm -hmm. but yeah. yeah, and we didn't... I don't remember seeing a single cell phone in this entire movie. Yeah. I don't think so either. Yeah. Um, That's the what makes it scary. interactions <laughs> between the kids were mostly okay and genuine. Again, the comedy just falls short. It's just subpar. <laughs> um, the Them getting in the cop car, like they're, the cops telling them you're going to jail and all, was definitely a movie's got a movie moment because that's how they got into the house. Yeah. Was the house bit off half the car. Yeah. So. Definitely a movie's got a movie moment. Um, You could have done better. <laughs> there were so many other ways they could have gotten in the house. Yeah. That didn't involve a cop car getting chomped in half. But, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, it's like they had a plan for the house to fall asleep. And then it's like they could have... Just stuck with that and it had maybe it wasn't strong enough because it's a ginormous house or, or. Well, I appreciate that later on they brought that um, little tidbit back into the movie. Like, we tried to put a house to sleep with cold medicine. <laughs> Who does that? Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that at least you brought attention to it so we didn't have to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it was just everything. Nothing makes that much sense. And the fact that her body was still there in the concrete? No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and now this dude no longer has a house. But it's fine. <laughs> this is fine. No one's going to question where it went, all the destruction on the street. Also, <laughs> where it went. <laughs> no one was trying to find Chowder, his best friend, the whole night he was gone while they were watching the house. The dad called the friend in the morning. Yeah. And that was it. The parents aren't very good in this movie. They're really not. <laughs> They're really not. They need to do better. Yes. And the girl's mom didn't believe her, but didn't come pick her up either. And didn't question that she was there that whole time. <laughs> Just like, no, no, I'll pick you up when you're done. <laughs> this is fine. I did, I forgot to write this down, but uh -huh. I did like the interaction between the babysitter and the girl. That was kind of, that That oh, was yeah. the one scene yes. that made me kind of chuckle. Yes. Because like the girl was like playing with mm -hmm. uh, the babysitter <laughs> as much as, yeah, it was great. How <laughs> the babysitter's like, nice try, it's not my house. <laughs> yeah, I like their babysitter. Bantering. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's cut to the chase here. <laughs> 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 so that was that was cool but everything else just and yeah it was cool that he was 
part of a demolitions crew, but why did he have actual explosives in the house? Yeah, that that seems risky. That was another movie's got a movie moment. Yeah. So. When there was a construction site nearby. But okay. Yeah. <laughs> it was just a lot of conveniences and subpar execution and just... I can't with this movie. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, like, overall... It's an okay, like, preteen horror movie, uh, and I, and it's got a more, it's got a creative story, but there are just so many other, like, preteen or kid horror movies out there that there, are so much there's stronger. There's so many better ones. <laughs> yeah, this one's kind of... Yeah. I wouldn't say bottom of the bar- barrel necessarily, no. but it's, 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 like, below tier. There are worse ones. But yeah, it's definitely subpar. Yep. So, But thank you for joining us today and let us know what you thought of the movie. If you'd like to recommend a movie game or tea, you can leave us a comment or join our Discord server. And if you'd like to keep up to date with our content, you can find our link tree listed below. If you'd like to support us monetarily, we have a Teespring and PayPal, or we have our affiliate link with Republic of Tea available. It does not affect the price of the tea, it just allows us to continue to do what we love. And until the next time, guys, stay safe and stay spoopy. Bye! Bye.